approaching permanent residence as a student. Okay, one of the things which we do, uh, especially in our uh, provinces, is that we have our own recruitment of students overseas. And I'm going to tell you what we counsel them before they come to Canada. Normally, when a student comes to Canada, the first thing we tell them is don't take a very tough course. Don't. Why? Because what is what is going to dramatically change your life? What? What is going to change your life? First of all, the age. No. What is going to change your life? In your approach, what is going to change your life? What? Your study in Canada is going to change your life? Not much. What is going to change your life? Yes. Exactly. Permanent residence will change your life. Dramatically. You may not understand that today, but after you understand, you will know that. Okay? So that is your approach. Your approach is, many students when I go overseas, Oh, I want to do masters. I want to do MS. I want to do this. I'm, why? Why kill yourself? I've seen students with 46% marks. Okay? C. Grade C. But they want to do MBA in Canada. Right? You come to Canada and study, take a tough course and fail. Everything goes. Yeah. Everything goes. You won't get PGWP. Nothing will happen to you. You have pretty much done. You are done. You are lost. At the same time, if you take a very simple course, because what gives you permanent residence in this country? Do you know? Do you know what gives you per Sorry? To successfully complete your course? Yeah, that is one thing. But what actually gives you permanent residence? Sorry? Job. Exactly. Very good. Your work gives you permanent residence. Not your study. You can go do two year course in Seneca, you can then jump to Centennial two year course and you fi finally do ten year course. Will you get PR? No. No. You'll not. But if you work, your experience is what gets you permanent residence. Your work experience. And you must understand that. And many students don't understand that when you come here, you want to take the nice course, a tough course, all these things, thinking that your course is going to give you permanent. Your course is not going to give you anything. Right? So take a simple course, work and study. It's like a double x war. You fail, you lost. You work, you gain. And you pass, you gain. These two things go hand in hand. Okay, your study, you have to pass. At the same time, you have to work because you need that experience to get into skilled work. And we'll talk about skilled work in a while. But very important. Right? Sir, so, one question is rising here. Sorry? One question is rising here, just for a student. Yeah. Uh, if a student gets a course in humanitarian, yes. for example, in any Canadian university or college, yeah. uh, if, if he goes where to work as a uh, self representative yes. or as a cashier, yes. then uh, is there any Absolutely. Sense? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Very good. Okay. The, again, ask me this question when we talk about okay. the thing. But very good question. The question is, do I have to work in the area of study? Yeah. And the answer is no. Okay. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Sometimes it is good to change. Okay. And we'll talk about why it's good to change sometimes. Okay. Now, when it comes to uh, permanent residence, the main points. Um, The main points uh, which you have to keep in mind uh, to prepare for, uh, even before you arrive, okay? So those of you who arrive, you can even start it uh, right now. What to do as soon as you arrive in Canada, you must focus on jobs where PR regulation of skilled work does not apply. I know all these things are... Uh, we just go point by point. First of all, when you're leaving your home country, you must understand you're changing your residence. Okay, when you leave from India or Sri Lanka or Philippines and you're coming to Canada to study, if you come on a visit visa, your residence is still your home country. Because visitor is not a residence move. Okay, but if you come as a student, if you're coming as a work, on a work permit, if you're coming as uh, on anything else, permanent residence is your citizen. So I'm not even going to bother to touch that. But nevertheless, any other, any other temporary residence, you are moving your residence. Right? So it's always better to get all your documents ready 
regarding the move. Now, when you are moving your residence, it is good to get your police clearance done. Okay, permanent residence requires police clearance. Okay, you are living in the country over a period of time, you are moving, get your police clearance done before you move. Before you move. Get your credential evaluation done. Okay, you have studied your bachelor's in, uh, in uh, India or Sri Lanka, uh, you get your credential evaluation done. It's always good to do things earlier. Okay, I've been in this business too long to understand that sometimes just the delay will cost you big time. Why? I give, I give a classic example. We have had in India, there are several nursing colleges. All right. So, at one point, WES used to give evaluation, favorable evaluation for everybody. But as time passes, and when they find out that certain of those colleges have indulged in certain malpractices or something like that, they will stop giving positive. Right? But if you had got the credential evaluation before, wow, you it's valid for five years, you're, you're okay. But if you got to get it later, and for some reason you are, your institution is blacklisted, it's gone. Okay, so sometimes it's good that you get all these things in advance and don't let you know, time become your enemy. Okay, so it's good. So when you leave your home country and you come to Canada, you know that permanent residence is your, your pathway here, you're going to settle here. Try to get all your documentations for permanent residence even. If we, because after, you don't need to get it because you move your residence. Now suppose you're going back to say India and you're going to live there again, then you should not get your permanent residence because then you need a valid uh, police clearance at the time. But if you move residence, then it's always better to get all these documents ready. So credential evaluation, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, police clearance. Um, and language is extremely important. Okay, language extremely important for permanent residence. So when you come to Canada, try to be friends. Don't try to stick around with things you're very familiar with. That's human tendency. You know, you're from my country, I'm from your country, we speak the same language, let's stick together. Wow, that is good. But you must keep that after you become a permanent resident, not before. Before you must try to expand your network, you must become friendly with, with Canadians. When you become friendly with people who are you know, born here or lived here, your language is going to improve. Well, it's, it's natural. Okay? Now, I know some people have the feeling that I speak good English so I don't care. When you, when you say you speak good English, do you have 7.5 in IELTS or 6.5? Right? If it's 6.5, it's not good enough. Right? English dramatically changes your permanent residence. Dramatic. Okay, it, it has an influence on your experience. If you have more experience, your English, your points go up with more English. You know, everything has a profound impact on language. So language should be your focus of improvement and you must constantly keep trying. Don't wait until, oh, I, my PR is, oh, I'm going to apply for PR only after three years. So I will wait until then. Why? Try it today. Because you might think you are very good. But when you try and you say, oh, I got only 6.5, then you have a lot of area of improvement. Don't do it very frequently, but you can try it once a year. And here you have self -trip. you just apply on online and the exam is online. Right? It's quite, quite simple. Right? I'm not saying it's easier than IELTS, but nevertheless, these are things um, we, we, you should always keep, be, uh, be prepared because many times students leave it till the last minute and in the last minute it will actually put you in trouble. Okay, we, uh, it, we, in our practice it is very, very often. It's so often that students put, put, put. We have a student now, uh, he, ha he speaks extremely good English, but he has got only 6.5 in IELTS. His visa is expiring in two months. He's, he's from a country which has got civil unrest and he does not want to go there because he thinks he will be killed. Right? These are type of situations where you cannot let time pass. Right? He speaks good English, he's got only 6.5 and he's never improved it. And I said, why don't you improve it? Will it help? Yes! 
it will help until you get 7.5 you can keep on improving your english okay it's very very significant when it comes to uh, permanent residence so um, uh, understand again another thing is keep in touch with immigration okay talk to people right after you go out of the session today you will understand a lot of things which is different from what you have understood today until now okay i am pretty sure most people tell me that when i came i thought like this but now it's done another another thing is always visit the government website okay see i see it's a great website fantastic information visit that but don't interpret what is given in cic in your favor don't interpret that you want it's human tendency okay i am on whenever cic says work permit it does not mean open work permit you must understand that open work permit is like a gift from the government it has nothing to do it is not even mentioned unless it's specifically mentioned pgwp or open work permit okay oh, work permit means lmia work permit you must understand that and that's why many students even make mistakes you go to the website and say if you are on a work permit you are on assumed status you have got bridging opportunities you have got assumed status no assumed status is not for open work permit assumed status is for work permit that means lmia work permit uh employer work okay so we'll talk a little bit about um pgwp and whether which is better so um it's uh, that's also very important be up to date with immigration regulations talk to people talk don't talk to students for heaven say you talk to students you are death knell okay because every student has this great belief that the other side is always greener why are you in ontario let's go to saskatchewan right or bc oh there it's wonderful who said that you are in a province which has got the highest quotas for immigration okay and we'll come to that when we talk about uh, pnps the other um, important thing is you must work on your pr from the day you land in this country not when you get your pgwp from the day you land when you come here to study you have to find the right employer right don't go and join very big companies because they will not touch your application no big companies corporate corporations they will not even touch your they don't want to get in, involved in immigration at the same time the small company if they see value in your work right and and we see the we see a big difference between toronto and the small cities big difference okay in the small cities the employers will take do anything to keep their employees and we have seen that in sudbury this thunder bay wow thunder bay is like far north right oh they are very very they want to make sure that that person who is working there is helped and they will do anything right so employers again attitudes of employers also are different when it comes to city cities are much more vibrant they very active employers don't care much you work you go right but even here we have seen significant support from employers if you show value to the employer for your employment and we'll come to that at a later time as to how to approach employers and how you can grow uh, one common mistake which students do is going to the employer and saying help me i want my pr you're gone god the employer could t- take advantage of you and your value goes down you have to help yourself don't let somebody else help you and it's and you must understand low population country uh, you know people are scarce here finding a good employer employees is not that easy and an employer will do anything to retain them. right and certain things you must uh, uh, i'll give you some ideas as to how to um uh deal with employers okay uh, sometimes so you must start identifying your employer from the day you land and try to stick on with that employer until you finish because many students sometimes because somebody else is giving you a dollar or more an hour you jump 
right? No, don't don't try to do that. Okay, so um, uh, do that. And the other thing again, police clearance. When you are staying, you must get police clearance from every country which you have lived for more than six years. All right, so you must understand that. So, say for example, you are coming here as a student. So many students come here from Dubai, right? They lived in India. They have, uh, or in uh, Sri Lanka or in Philippines, they have to get that police clearance. And then they also have to get police clearance from Dubai. It is much easier to get police clearance from uh, Middle Eastern countries when you are in the country. It becomes a lot more difficult when you come to Canada to study and then you apply again for a UAE uh, police clearance after you left. Okay, so these are things which you must look at before you come into this country so that you can. Uh, manage uh, your permanent residence. Permanent residence, most students become permanent residents, right? So uh, it's very important. Um, okay. Another thing you must keep in mind is if you have work experience in your home country, you could qualify under FSW. Okay, so there is work experience very important. We'll talk about immigration processes. Uh, okay, now let's.